When people think of deserts, they picture endless desolation, yellow sand stretching to the horizon, plants struggling to survive, harsh living conditions that seem inevitable. But the Kabuki Desert in Inner Mongolia, China, is undergoing an unprecedented transformation. The Chinese government invested $360 million to build a more than 700-kilometer-long artificial canal system through the desert. Over the past nine years, 120 billion cubic meters of water from the Yellow River have been successfully channeled into the desert, turning what was once a barren wasteland into a thriving oasis. Surrounding villages can now farm and raise livestock in areas that were previously lifeless. Living standards have improved dramatically. So, how did Chinese engineers introduce 120 billion cubic meters of water into one of the harshest deserts on Earth? And how are local people now creating wealth in a place that was once uninhabitable? The Kubuki Desert is located in the Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region of China. It's famous for its vast area and unique geographical features. The desert stretches approximately 400 kilometers long and 50 kilometers wide, with a total area of 18,600 square kilometers. It's the seventh largest desert in China. In the past, Kabuki was dominated by flowing sand dunes, which accounted for 61% of its total area. These dunes ranged in height from 10 meters to 60 meters, with various shapes, mainly dune chains and grid-shaped formations. The constantly shifting yellow sands seriously affected the local ecological environment. But what makes the Kabuki Desert particularly significant is its location. It's the desert closest to Beijing. During the dry seasons of autumn and winter, wind and sand blowing from Kabuki would hit cities like Beijing and Tianjin, increasing the frequency of haze and sandstorm events. According to research, more than 30 sandstorms occur in the Kabuki Desert every year, making it almost the largest source of sandstorms in northern China. Yet the Kabuki Desert isn't just a vast sea of sand. It's also adjacent to the Yellow River, the second longest river in China. The Yellow River has a total length of 5,464 kilometers and a drainage area of 752,000 square kilometers. It originates from the Bayan Har Mountains on the Qinghai Tibet Plateau and flows through nine provinces, including the Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region. The annual water volume of the Yellow River is as high as 58 billion cubic meters. In the hydrological cycle of the Yellow River, the river goes through freezing and thawing stages every year, which last for up to 120 days. During the Yellow River flood season, rising water levels pose a serious threat to the safety of embankments and may cause flooding. If response measures aren't taken properly, flood disasters can cause severe property damage and even threaten the lives of surrounding residents. Prior to the canal project, the Chinese government had to invest more than 100 million yuan every year to strengthen embankments in Yellow River-related basins to ensure resident safety. This huge expenditure brought significant economic pressure to the government. Residents living in surrounding areas not only had to deal with skies full of yellow sand, but also faced floods during the Yellow River flood season. These natural disasters brought serious threats to life and property in the Hangjin Banner area, even forcing some residents to leave their homes. But the situation today has changed. Inner Mongolian residents no longer face the twin threats of sandstorms and floods. They've successfully transformed barren land into fertile farmland. How was this done? In the face of severe natural challenges, the Chinese government never gave up on managing the Kabuki Desert. With the help of scientific management and ecological restoration knowledge, Chinese experts decided to implement a project called Leading the Yellow River into the Desert. The core strategy was to introduce river water into low-lying areas of the desert through a main canal and branch canals on the south bank of the Yellow River to form water bodies during the high water level season. This approach would not only reduce pressure on the Yellow River and prevent flooding, but also improve the ecological environment of the desert. A true win-win situation. After years of planning and demonstration, 
In 2004, the Chinese government invested $360 million in this project and began constructing a 700-kilometer water transmission system to facilitate the flow of water from the Yellow River through artificial canals into the Kabuki Desert. However, building an artificial canal in the harsh environment of Kabuki was full of tremendous challenges. Chinese workers often had to use rudimentary tools to dig channels in strong winds and flying sand. Sometimes they needed to go deep into the sand sea for exploration, carrying heavy instruments and daily necessities on their backs, which made the work extremely difficult. The pipeline laying process was especially challenging. The steel pipelines used weighed several tons, and some weighed dozens of tons. Transporting and hoisting them on soft quicksand was extremely difficult. A little carelessness could cause the pipeline to deform, tilt, or even collapse. In addition, solving the problem of water body crossings was also a major challenge in the project. To protect the river ecology, the construction team had to take measures to elevate the pipeline or reroute around natural water bodies like the Yellow River. This required engineers to design complex bridge and culvert structures that would not only ensure smooth water flow, but also take into account the hydrological characteristics of the river and ensure ecological balance. With extraordinary wisdom and courage, Chinese engineers overcame numerous difficulties and designed and built a variety of bridges and culverts to ensure the smooth progress of the project. In the desert where wind and sand were raging, the construction team worked day and night. They finally completed the construction of the Yellow River Diversion Project and successfully connected the water system. According to current plans, the Desert Canal can introduce at least 8 billion cubic meters of water into the desert every year. What's even more worth mentioning is that when the Yellow River flows through the Kabuki Desert, it not only brings precious water resources, but also transports fertile yellow sediment rich in minerals and organic matter. The content of this sediment in Yellow River water is extremely high. Some people vividly say that 7% of every bucket of water is sediment. More importantly, the yellow mud expands when it encounters water forming a sticky colloidal film that can effectively bind loose sand grains together. This changes the structure of the sand and significantly improves soil water retention. At the same time, this rich organic matter provides necessary nutrients for plants growing in the sand, which is crucial for plants in such a barren environment. It's precisely because of these unique physical and chemical properties of Yellow River water that the originally barren Kabuki Desert was transformed into fertile farmland. Because of this, residents around the Kabuki Desert flocked to the land and started a new life of planting and breeding. In 2016, local residents planted 5,200 acres of rice in this area, proving that this former desert now had the conditions for agricultural production. By 2017, there were more than 100 crop varieties planted here, with a total area of 10,200 acres. These covered food crops, cash crops, feed crops, trees, shrubs, and Chinese herbal medicines, effectively turning the desert area into an oasis. Subsequently, local herders also actively participated and established pastures in this oasis. Through the organic combination of grassland, farmland, and animal husbandry, they further promoted the greening process of the region. Today, the annual net economic income generated from the Kabuki Desert has reached $2.7 million, bringing significant economic benefits to local residents. Once upon a time, the vegetation coverage rate in the Kabuki Desert was less than 1%, but now, the situation has greatly improved. About one-third of the desert area has been successfully greened, with a tree planting survival rate of more than 80%. Vegetation coverage has increased to 65%, an increase of more than 30% from 10 years ago. The number of biological species has increased to 1,026, and the spread of mobile sand dunes has been effectively curbed. The introduction of Yellow River water and the greening of the Kabuki Desert jointly gave birth to this green miracle.
Since 2015, a total of 4.9 billion cubic meters of Yellow River water has been introduced, forming nearly 100 square kilometers of water surface and wetlands. The desert area that has been controlled amounts to more than 8.4 million acres. This natural ecological pattern of connected sand and water not only transformed the desert into an oasis, but also promoted the natural recovery and growth of more than 20 kinds of plants. More than 10 kinds of water birds now live here year-round. In addition, with the improvement of the environment, tens of thousands of people have moved from the Gobi Desert to irrigated areas. They've actively planted trees and built sand prevention shrubs around their new residences. This has not only improved the ecological environment but also provided more opportunities for agriculture and animal husbandry, bringing abundant opportunities for people to improve their livelihoods. In recent years, the Kubuki Desert has become world famous for its successful ecological management. China not only introduced water resources from the Yellow River to improve the desert environment through the Leading the Yellow River into the Desert project, but also adopted a series of comprehensive measures. These include returning farmland to forests, prohibiting overgrazing, building the Three North Shelter Belt System, three-dimensional ecological photovoltaic desertification control, and the Beijing Tianjin Sandstorm Source Control projects. These projects have honestly, effectively controlled desertification trends and achieved significant environmental improvements in local areas. This diversified governance strategy not only improved the ecological quality of the region, but also enhanced biodiversity and the quality of life for regional residents. The successful desert governance experience has made the Kabuchi Desert a model for global desert management demonstrating how ecological degradation can be reversed through systematic efforts at local and national levels. The transformation of the Kabuchi Desert is more than just an engineering achievement. It's a testament to what's possible when scientific planning, sustained investment, and community participation come together to address environmental challenges. For decades, desertification was seen as an irreversible process, land degraded by overuse, drought, and poor management that would remain barren forever. The Kubuki project has proven that assumption wrong. What makes this project particularly remarkable is its holistic approach. It wasn't just about building a canal and pumping water into the desert. It was about understanding the complex interactions between water, soil, vegetation, and human activity. The engineers who designed the system recognized that Yellow River water carries sediment, and rather than treating that sediment as a problem to be filtered out, they saw it as an asset. That sediment, rich in minerals and organic matter, transformed the desert sand into soil capable of supporting plant life. The project also demonstrates the importance of thinking beyond short-term fixes. Investing $360 million in a desert canal system might have seemed extravagant in 2004, but when you consider the alternative, spending more than 100 million yuan every year just to reinforce embankments against flooding, plus the ongoing costs of sandstorm damage to cities like Beijing, the long-term economics makes sense. The canal system addresses multiple problems simultaneously. It reduces flood risk, controls sandstorms, creates agricultural land, and generates economic opportunities for local communities. The human dimension of the Kubuki transformation is equally important. Tens of thousands of people who once lived in harsh conditions, constantly battling sandstorms and floods, now live in productive agricultural areas. They're not just surviving, they're thriving. They're planting crops, raising livestock, and earning income from land that was previously worthless. This isn't just environmental restoration, it's social and economic development. The increase in biodiversity is another sign of success. When vegetation coverage was less than 1%, the desert was essentially dead. Now, with vegetation coverage at 65% and more than 1,026 biological species present, the ecosystem is coming back to life. Water birds are returning. Plants are growing naturally. The desert is becoming a functioning ecosystem again, not just a green space maintained by human intervention.
The Kabuki Desert Project has also become a global reference point. Desertification is a problem that affects countries around the world, particularly in Africa, the Middle East, and Central Asia. The techniques developed in Kabuki, water diversion, sediment utilization, vegetation planning strategies, and community engagement are now being studied and adapted elsewhere. China has positioned itself as a leader in desert management, and the Kabuki model is part of that global influence. But the story also raises important questions about sustainability. The project depends on a continuous supply of water from the Yellow River. As climate change affects water availability, and as competing demands for water increase, from cities, agriculture, and industry, will there be enough water to sustain the Kabuki oasis? The Yellow River is already one of the most heavily utilized rivers in the world. Every drop of water diverted to Kabuki is water that can't be used somewhere else. This is where the broader context of China's environmental policies becomes relevant. The Three North Shelterbelt System, photovoltaic desertification control, and other initiatives mentioned in the project are all part of a coordinated national effort to address environmental degradation. China is investing heavily in renewable energy, reforestation, and ecological restoration because it recognizes that environmental problems, left unchecked, become economic and social crises. The Kabuki Desert transformation is a success story, but it's also a reminder of how much effort is required to reverse environmental damage. It took nine years, $360 million, and the labor of thousands of workers just to restore one desert. And the work isn't finished. Maintaining the canal system, managing water distribution, preventing overgrazing, and ensuring sustainable agricultural practices will require ongoing effort and investment for decades to come. Still, the achievement is undeniable. A desert that once threatened Beijing with sandstorms and forced residents to abandon their homes is now an oasis generating millions of dollars in economic activity every year. Vegetation coverage has increased from less than 1% to 65%. Biodiversity has exploded. Local communities are prospering. And the model developed here is being replicated elsewhere. The Kabuki Desert is proof that with the right approach, even the most degraded landscapes can be restored. It's proof that environmental restoration and economic development don't have to be in conflict. They can reinforce each other. And it's proof that large-scale environmental challenges, while difficult and expensive to address, are not insurmountable. The desert that once seemed destined to remain barren forever is now blooming. And that transformation offers hope for other degraded landscapes around the world.